بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا واللعنة الدائمة الأبدية على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم وقوله الحق Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran and what he says is the truth. In the chapter of Fusila, chapter 41, verse 53, Allah states, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in this blessed verse, he says, and we shall show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves until it is made clear and apparent to them that he is the truth, is it not sufficient for them that Allah bears witness over all things? Sadaq Allahu al-Aliyu al-Azim, amanna billah. Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As we continue in the second episode, in our intellectual discourse, in order to prove not only does Allah exist, not only is the Creator unlimited, not only is He unchanging, which means that he always existed and will always exist as we proved in the last episode, but we left off in talking about chaos theory. Now the idea of chaos theory is the fact that everything goes to disorganization. It's the theory or the idea of entropy for those who have a scientific background. Now the idea that everything goes to chaos is problematic to us, why? Because we already proved that everything empirically, based on the examples that we gave last episode, is actually organized. And a gentleman, a great scientist by the name of Benoit Mendelbrot, who held the position of Albert Einstein for many years, a man with over 15 PhDs, known as the father of fractal geometry or fractal mathematics, this man, Benoit Mendelbrot, proved that what you see as being random and chaotic is actually a supreme form of organization all based on repetitive iterations of one instance known as a fractal. Therefore, Brownian motion, for those who have studied chemistry and know that the movement of a particle in Brownian motion, which used to be thought of as being random and chaotic, actually is a supreme form of organization. Now, Benoit Mendelbrot actually studied the perimeters of um, land masses to determine the algorithm for what is it that gives land masses the shape that they have and determines their size. And he determined that it is one small fractal iteration of something that causes, in repetition, that causes land masses to be shaped the way that they are because of the water pounding the edges of the soil. And he is a Nobel laureate. So we're not talking about a normal scientist. So therefore, scientifically prove, um, proving the fact that there's no such thing as chaos becomes a mathematical fact to us now. Not just something that by intellectual reasoning with simple empirical examples uh, can be proven, but also by um, mathematical algorithms in fractal geometry. Now, what's interesting also is that we can also prove that there's no chaos by a very simple example. And I'll share with you the story of a professor who had to attend a conference in Sydney and he was supposed to give a keynote speech. Now the keynote speech that he gave was delayed. It was delayed three hours. The reason why is because he was late. His colleagues waited for him. Half hour, one hour, two hours, three hours passed by. He finally shows up. They said to him, where have you been? He said, well, today I decided to walk to the conference center. He said, when I left my home, I walked and walked, and then I came to the edge of a river. I sat by the river bank as I waited for small twigs to come together to form a raft. As soon as that happened, I got on the raft, crossed the river, and here I am, only three hours late. They laughed at him and ridiculed him. They said, that is absolutely ludicrous. How can you expect us to believe that a bunch of twigs came together coincidentally and created a raft. He said, well, wow, um, that's quite surprising. 
Aren't you the ones that claim that this entire universe in its intricate details came together by sheer coincidence? And you can't even believe that a small raft with its tiny little twigs came together out of sheer coincidence. And you see how ridiculous it is to make the argument that this entire universe would come together out of sheer coincidence when a small raft wouldn't be able to come together by sheer coincidence. Therefore, the whole notion of coincidence and organization coming out of disorganization and chaos is intellectually unacceptable. The rational mind has a hard time believing it. It cannot occur. So the next thing that we need to look at then is what? We need to start looking at certain challenges to our proofs. For example, those that say, well, Sheikh, now what about earthquakes? What about tsunamis? What about tornadoes? What about natural disasters? Aren't those a sign of a disorganized system? No. We proved that this system, empirically speaking, based on the examples that we gave, is organized. We proved that the Creator, the unlimited, is all perfect, all purposeful, all just. Therefore, we know that the system is organized and we know that He who created the system is all perfect and all purposeful. Therefore, whatever occurs in this system occurs with a purpose. Therefore, the earthquake has a purpose. Not only is it part of the organized system, the earthquake or the tornado or the tsunami, because of the movement of the tectonic plates and their collision, the relief of pressure occurs within this limited changing system. Because you know, every system that is limited and is in a state of change, therefore, has a buildup of pressure. Just think of ourselves. Once we eat some onions, right? Imagine the pressure that builds up within us. What would happen if we don't go relieve ourselves? Think about a pressure cooker. If I don't have that little pressure release at the top, what would happen to that pressure cooker? Every system that is changing in this limited world therefore must have a system of pressure relief. And that's only part of its organization. What would happen if I don't relieve that pressure through that earthquake, through that tsunami? What would happen? There would be a buildup of pressure, just like in that pressure cooker, until there's a greater, more calamitous event in greater regions of the earth, affecting more and more people. Well, what about all those people that die, Sheikhna? That's unfair, that's unjust. No. Did we not say that this is an organized system and that the Creator, the unlimited, is all just, all purposeful? Therefore, it was their time. Allah deemed that the beginning of their life would be somewhere and that their end of their life would be somewhere at a specific time. And because Allah is unlimited, because Allah therefore is all perfect, then that is the perfect place for them to die. Remember, Everybody has a beginning and an end. In this limited world, everything has a beginning and an end. And therefore, if I have a beginning at one time, my, be my end should be at another time. Now, if my end was in an area because of an earthquake, because I chose to live there, then that's exactly where I will end. You say, well, Sheikhna, but what about those people who don't have a choice to move? At the end of the road, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all-purposeful, the all-just, would not burden a soul with more that it can handle because that would be cruel. Therefore, it would be my choice to stay in that place. You're telling me that a person doesn't have legs to move from one place to another? You say to me, no, Shaykh, now what about a person who's handicapped? What about them being handicapped? We'll deal with that when we get to the fact that Allah is all-just. But let's say a person being handicapped, living in that area of the world, them not being able to move. We say again, this is part of the organized system and Allah is all purposeful and all just and therefore them being there was the best way for their lives to end because the unlimited chose and deemed for it to be so. You see, so with those first two proofs, we can rationalize and intellectualize and come to realities and really prove the fact that no, these are all either part of the organized system or because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose it. And because Allah is the reason why this occurred, then that means it's the perfect decision, the perfect place for them to be. And of course, keep in mind, we will deal in, in upcoming episodes with ways for us to 
change that system, with keys for us to be able to change that system. I'll leave that for upcoming episodes inshallah. I won't give you all the answers in this second episode. Now what other questions may come to mind? Other questions that may come to mind after we um, uh, have answered all of these questions is the very simple question of, well, now that I believe that there is a Creator and I believe that He is unlimited and I believe that all of these natural disasters aren't chaotic, they're part of the organized system. Well, if God knows all and He's all-purposeful, then shouldn't He tell me why He created me? I understand that I'm worthy. I'm under, I understand that there's a purpose for my existence. But how will I know what Allah, the, all, the Creator, the Unlimited, the All-Perfect wants from me? Because if He doesn't tell me what He wants from me, then surely that would be cruel. Therefore, I know since Allah can't be cruel because cruelty is a deficiency and Allah is indeficient, Allah has no deficiencies because He is all-perfect, then He must tell me what He wants from me. Just as I would communicate with my friends to let them know when I want to meet them, just as my teachers would tell me what my homework is um, so that the next day when I show up for class I will have completed the assignment so that I'm not punished the next day when I come without having the assignment or the homework, I would be punished, that would be totally cruel. Just as my parents wouldn't punish me without laying the ground rules or a university wouldn't punish me for cheating without telling me that plagiarism and cheating is wrong, so too Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of all things, by priority would know and by priority would tell me that He wants me to do this or that or the other. His expectations of me, what laws He wants me to follow, just as us humans place laws, the Almighty must place laws to tell me what He expects of me so that I can fulfill the purpose for which He has placed me on this earth. Therefore, just as I would text my friends, just as I would post a message on Facebook, just as I would email my colleagues, just as I would write a letter to my friends, so too there must be a message that would tell me what Allah Almighty, the Creator of all things, would want of me. Now the question is, how do I know that this message is from Allah the Almighty? How would I know that the message before me is truly from the Creator of this limited world, the unlimited, all-perfect, almighty Allah? In order to know, what I need to do is I need to think about all those characteristics that I proved that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses. I said that Allah is all perfect, therefore the message must be all perfect. I said that Allah is unchanging, therefore the message must be unchanging. I also know that Allah is the creator of the universe, therefore the message must consist of information in there that tells me of secrets about the creation of the universe that nobody else would know. I must also have information in this message that tells me, that guides me and corrects any false claims that were made before. Next episode we'll talk about that, inshallah. But what I want to talk about in the remaining part of the episode, inshallah, is this theory of evolution after disproving chaos. After saying clearly that a system that is organized can't come from this organization. It has to, be a, it has to have a creator of its organization. Even if we go back to those who claim that the world was created by itself, nature created itself, that there was a boson particle and that boson particle created itself by a reaction. Even those scientists say we don't know who and what created and initiated Big Bang. Us Muslims, we believe in the Big Bang Theory. We believe in dinosaurs. We believe in all of that stuff. We just don't believe in natural selection as it pertains to macro evolution. We believe in natural selection as it pertains to the survival of the fittest. But we don't believe in the fact or in the claim that, that is made by the theory of evolution that humans come from apes. Why? Because there's no proof of it. Once there is proof, then we'll discuss that point. However, the theory of evolution is based on something called random transmutations and we just proved that there's no such thing as random behavior or coincidence. 
I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to realize all of these truths through our intellects. I thank you for listening. Until next episode, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.